the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got another announcement because I've released some more content on my website uh, that can be purchased. Um, I know some of my videos have been quite long um, for previous announcements. I'm going to quite try and keep this one a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate to you my casework collection which I've just, just released. Um, so this is for my business. Um, it's not for the channel but I use this just to promote um, the content so more people are aware of it. Um, so I'm just announcing that I've released my casework collection. Uh, this is made to support my Revit template, which you can also find on the website as well. And so far, um, sales have been great. A lot of people have been purchasing products and I've been getting really good feedback as well. Uh, most people are finding the content quite affordable too, which is great. Uh, most of the products are around the $50 mark. Um, so just to give you an idea of what, what it all costs. So the purpose of this video is to show you just quickly how you can purchase it and then look at a demonstration of the product and then also just touch on some future products. Do note that you don't have to feel pressured to buy this just to support my channel. Um, this is just if you're interested and if it'll help you. Um, I may use some of it here and there in future videos just to save me a little bit of time in doing demonstrations, um, but otherwise um, don't feel that it'll block you off uh, from my channel itself. So typically the casework collection, I'm charging $75 Australian for it currently, but for one week only I'm, I'm dropping this to $50. Um, I'm not planning on applying any further discounts this time around, um, but I did when I, when I released my template. So why am I sharing it? Well, I want the industry to improve. So I do want to provide some affordable and what I think is good examples of best quality uh, content. Because there is a lot of stuff out there that's very expensive and sometimes not of high quality, in my opinion. So this is my way to combat that. So in order to purchase it, um, just jump onto my website and just click on the store button. And then you'll find um, just a whole bunch of products. In this case, the one that I'm, I'm advertising has a little 33% promotion on it. Um, so if you click on that, it'll take you to this page and you can add it to your cart. You will need to be a site member. Um, so feel free to sign up if you want. Um, I don't really track any information about you. So it's just so, just so I can track who's actually purchasing my products really. Um, so what do you get? Well, you get a, a sample model, which I'm gonna show you today. Um, and that contains essentially every single family type in the, in the pack. So there's 19 family types, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but some of the families do contain a lot of types and a lot of variations. For example, um, they, one family contains the open, one door and two door variations, as well as the glazed door variations. So some of them do contain quite a lot. As well as that, um, there's just a few image map files to support the template and also just a copy of the terms of use. Um, and available separately, there's a whole bunch of support files uh, which might help you better make use of this content if you're looking to use it professionally. Coming soon, I'm going to be releasing a lot of different products. Um, so I've got some really exciting things lined up. Um, if you are a member on my website, you might have seen a, a, a store announcement come through just to give you a little bit of a look ahead of what's coming. But let's just jump into the sample model and I'll show you uh, exactly what you get when you buy it. So I'm just in Revit 2020 and I'm in the sample model that comes with, uh, with the content. You do get it in a library structure as well. Um, but essentially this, this model, if you go to content view, um, has a floor plan as well as some sections um, which will show you all the content that's available. So there's actually a lot in my content pack because there's a lot of types. But if you zoom in, um, you start to see that there's sort of a categorization. So I have a whole bunch of benches. Um, I have a whole bunch of tall cupboards as I call them. So these are like full height units. And I have open, one door and two door types. I then also have the same for underbench. But I have a few variations such as corner cupboards um, and also what I call through cupboards. So cupboards that go all the way to the wall um, down here. So these are made to sort of go past the corner of a bench. As well as that, I also have um, overbench as well. Um, so I'll just go into 3D and show you what these all actually look like. Because in 2D, it's pretty hard to tell because everything's quite clean graphically in floor plan. If I jump into 3D, um, you can see that you get a whole bunch of elements. You get benches. Tall cupboards, you get a unit to put a fridge in, you get infill units. Um, you also get some more custom things like a, a joinery wardrobe filler. Uh, but you also get things like glass doors and you can see all these all these families have shelves in them, in them as well, for example. And this is all parametric, of course. So you can come into this family and say, I only want three shelves and it will parametrically update the number of shelves. So there is quite a lot of um, control and parameters in these families. Um, you also get things like underbench units, which you can see here, lots of different sizes. 
uh, corner cupboards. Um, so you get different types of corner cupboards. You get open, uh, you get sort of doors, glazed or solid. Um, as well as that, you also get uh, a custom size available in, in some families. So one thing that my families do that is quite unique is every family you see in blue is a custom site measured size that you can put yourself into the family. And this is actually in the same family as the fixed size as well. All you have to do is just change a parameter that says custom width, custom depth, custom height, and it will let you independently have some custom instances and some non-custom instances. A lot of, fam uh, pro a lot of um, firms that I'm aware of, they have to maintain two separate libraries just to do custom size and fixed size. As my family is, it's all activated by just a little tick box that says is manual. Um, so pretty funky. Um, I thought to demonstrate this, maybe I just put a few families down and show you how I can build a little assembly of casework. Um, so what I might do is just, just work in a plan, maybe just like over here. And I'm just gonna make a little 3D view as well. And I'm just gonna work in them at the same time. So you can sort of see the content in both in 3D but also in floor plan, so you get an idea of what the content actually looks like. And before I jump in, I will show you that the content does elevate cleanly as well. So you do get beyond lines, um, you get the, all the panel lines beyond, and you get swing lines as well, and all your handles as well. So I'll show you that as well. But let's just get started. So I'm just going to work in plan, and I might just start by placing from the family browser. I'll just go to casework. And let's just start with a a set of underbench cupboards. So in this case, I'm just gonna make a UB uh, doors family. I might start with a corner cupboard actually. So you can see there's a lot of types in these families. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna create a, a corner cupboard. And I'll just place that there. And you can see that's just appeared there. At the moment, this is an, a 720 bench cupboard. We'll just make a 900 bench cupboard instead. Um, so we'll just make this, uh, this one here. You see, I've also just really quickly added a door to the family. So really easy and all the graphics are, you know, nice and smooth. Um, I'll just place a few underbench cupboards. So let's just place a glazed, a glazed, um, glazed cupboard here. You see that one there, quite nice. And I might just copy that one across and maybe place an open, an open cupboard also. Um, at the moment, that's a 720 high cupboard. So I might, might swap that out for a solid door that's 900 because you can add more types to these, obviously, if you want particular sizes added to the to what's available. Um, but I have tried to at least provide a lot of the um, sort of the fundamental fundamental units. You can see I'm just making a one door there. And I can really quickly just change that in the same family to an open door as well. So I can really quickly swap these around and I can change this to say like a, a three shelf cupboard. And you'll see that now I get three shelves. Um, let's just place a tall unit now instead. So tall units are quite similar. Uh, but they go full height. So let's just place a two-door 1200 wide unit. You can see that's my, that's my two-door unit there. Just use my align tools and I'll just place a bench as well. So I've got um, straight L-shaped and U-shaped benches in the pack. So you have pretty much every type of bench you would need. Um, I'm just gonna place an L-shaped bench in this case. And I'm just gonna really quickly just, just adjust this to suit the, suit the size of the layout. So you can see there really quickly, I've just set up a nice little a nice little casework unit there and I can add some overbench cupboards as well. So what I can do in this case is just copy one of these underbench units in place and I'll just search for OB for overbench. And I should be able to find my overbench cupboards as well. In this case, I'll just get a, a one door 600. You see now I've just got a really quick um, little, little overbench unit that I've placed now. And again, I'll just make a 450 just to fill in that gap there. You can see I'm getting my overbench and underbench swings. Um, you, you do get access to object styles, uh, which come with my template. So if you do want to turn off any particular graphics or change them, the object styles are a way you could do it. So if you wanted to turn off um, your swings over, so swing plan over, you can just tick it off. And in this case, we should be able to turn off our overbench swings. Um, so you do get a lot of nice little controls like that that can help you customize how the families look. Um, as well as that, I do include some more standard components like bulkheads. Um, so if I wanted to place a bulkhead over these cupboards, I could just really quickly throw one in and change its size. And I always try to add handles for everything, so that's really easy. And I've got a lot of like little controls embedded in them too. So in this case, I can turn off the left panel here because it's butting into another bulkhead. So I can tick off left side. And if say there's a corner here, I can just turn off the left side. So you can see it's really easy and nice and simple to edit these. 
Um, I'll probably finish up by just showing you that it's also possible uh, to schedule these components. So I include in the file a casework schedule, um, which pretty much shows you that based on the shared parameters that are included in the families, everything is fully schedulable um, by size, but you can also schedule the, in this case, the number of doors, number of drawers, the number of hinges, uh, number of shelves, and whether the element has lighting or handles as well. So really easy um, to control. So, so in regards to lighting, that's probably worth quickly showing you. So all my overbench cupboards, um, you can turn on a pelmet initially, and you can also add lighting. So you can add a light and that will render um, with light as well. So that can be quite useful for um, kitchen, kitchen, kitchenette units where that often happens. Um, as well as that, I'll just quickly probably show you, uh, hmm. I'll show you the draw unit because the draw unit's pretty impressive. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to search for draw. And by default, I do just include um, uh, four, four drawers. Uh, but if you wanted to make a new draw type, so I see I've got four drawers here. Let's say I want to make a two drawer system. If I just duplicate that, and I won't worry about what I'm calling it for now, I can just go and change the number of drawers, in this case, to two. And you'll see that it's really easy to just parametrically update that family. And now that's a two drawer family. So you don't have to muck around with lots of different sizes of families in order to achieve a lot of outcomes. So hopefully that shows you just a little bit about what's contained in this, in this pack of content, um, but it is a lot. So definitely um, consider it if you're looking for a really thorough, um, complete package of casework families, because yeah, it's, it's pretty much every type you see here, um, which is about 140 types across 19 different families. And I guess graphically, they're quite clean and quite simple. And if you go to like say a section, for example, you'll see they elevate really cleanly as well. And if you do cut a section through families with certain components, you will get some 2D graphics in fine mode. So you can see here, I've got hinges and I've got uh, holes to fix my shelves at. So you do have a lot, of, um, a lot of nested control in these families as well. So lots of features that you can learn from here. And I guess too, it's all connected to things like the number of shelves. So as I change my shelves, you can see these all update to suit. So hopefully that sort of gives you some, some ideas of what you might find in this pack. Um, but thank, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you find interest in this pack and I'll be releasing more in future, uh, probably aiming for one every week or every second week, ideally. Um, this presentation will be on GitHub, not the content itself. Um, if you do have any questions about the content, feel free to reach out to me in the comments here or via LinkedIn or via my business, uh, BIM Guru. Uh, my website's www.bimguru.com.au. Um, and I'll, I'll be happy to respond to you with any queries. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in future Aussie BIM Guru tutorial videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.